Hey there and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at NAS Media but today we're looking at the brand new WD14TB NAS hard drive part of their WD Red series of drives. This brand new drive from WD allows you to have up to 14 terabytes of storage in your NAS and are designed for NAS environments so that's network attached storage and of course are great in RAID volumes. Now today we're going to be doing some standard PC desktop performance tests of this drive. Things like IOMeter, Atto Benchmark, and more. We're going to be running through a bunch of tests and putting this drive through its paces. But before we go any further, let's get that disclaimer right out there off the bat. First and foremost, I am well aware this is a drive designed for NAS storage, and therefore, testing it in a desktop user environment is not going to be optimal. That is, of course, very, very true. But when it comes to NAS's ins uh, drives inside a NAS, Benchmarking performance of individual drives and seeing exactly what these drives can do proves very, very difficult without significant improvements in NAS performance benchmark uh, tools out there. So for the now, for now, I'm going to be testing this via those desktop applications, and then in a follow-up video after this, we will be installing several of these drives in a NAS. Uh, in a RAID environment just to see the performance they can give you within that setup. After that, of course, I will be testing this drive in conjunction with the brand new um, SSDs, these ones here that I've just finished testing. This is the WD Red SA500, just to show you about what a great environment you can get out of these disks if you use NAS hard drives and SSDs for caching. Now, this disk itself is a 14 TB drive. The price and the specifications should be on the screen somewhere there right now. Um, and the drive itself does feature the NAS firmware inside NASware 3.0 from WD. And I have been using a number of WD Red drives for a long time. They're, of course, not the only NAS hard drive brand that I talk about. And I'm sure you know the other one that I'm not going to refer to in this video. But, you know, what we're going to be doing today is putting this drive through its paces to see what exactly the performance this drive will present on its own before we do some follow-up videos where we test this drive in a NAS environment. But otherwise, let's make our way over to the desktop there and start performing our tests. So here we are on our desktop environment here. And as you can see, I've connected via SATA that 14 TB WD Red NAS hard drive and it's appeared here. What we want to do is now mount this as a nice volume, get that visible, we'll put that under drive W and make the disk visible to us to utilize in our tests. I'm gonna wait for that drive to finish formatting. It is a big old drive. And while it does that, it's worth highlighting that this disk is designed for NAS. Once again, the tests we're going to be running today are going to be utilizing desktop benchmark tools, not NAS tools. The reason being that there is a lot more tools out there readily available. I'm also aware that the CPU and memory on the test rig that we're using today isn't too extensive, but it should be sufficient for these tests. My i7 rig that I've used in previous test videos, unfortunately is unavailable. And to make sure I could utilize a SATA system, this is the machine that I'm going to be utilizing. And of course, when I do get results throughout this video, it's worth highlighting that I have no intention of really commenting too strongly on the results. It would be unfair to judge this drive as a desktop drive when it shouldn't be utilized as such. These are merely performance benchmark test to, uh, results for you guys to kind of inform yourselves about the drive. So the first test we're gonna be utilizing is Atto Disk Benchmark. I'm gonna pull the drop down. There's our W drive. We're gonna be utilizing 512 byte uh, file types all the way up to 64 meg. And we're gonna run a full gamut of read write tests on those block sizes and formats. Let's get started on those tests. So the file size I went for there was a 256 meg test file, but it's worth highlighting that in tests utilizing things like black magic, I will be utilizing bigger file types of around one gig. The reason being that a number of you when you're using that is when you're looking at particularly two and four bays, a number of you immediately look at utilizing it for multimedia. And those file types are increasingly going to be bigger than these 256 megabytes. So just for this performance test, I'm going to be running the Atto benchmark on 256. But straight away, we are already seeing write speeds in excess of 100 megs. Now, it's worth highlighting that when I do utilize desktop tools to conduct these tests, one of the main reasons for that is because the bottleneck that arrives 
with NAS. If you utilize most NAS devices, unless you're going to utilize 10 gigabit ethernet, you're never really going to get these speeds externally. You can install a VM or run IOMeter as a remote agent and try to get these speeds. But given that a number of you very rarely use these tools and what the people that do use IOMeter and tools of that like would not utilize uh, the kind of video, a video like this because a number of you will go straight onto free NAS. But the rest of you, I know you have familiarity with the likes of Atto Benchmark, Blackmagic, HD Tune, and stuff like that. And those are the tools that we're going to be looking at in today's video. Um, but we are seeing that this drive is immediately giving us that 200 megs, which is great to hear. One of my earliest concerns about this disc was that in effort to differentiate between a pro and a standard disc, we may see uh, the return of 5400 versus 7200 RPMs and limited caching on the disc, which can often lead to a disparity between read and write. It makes sense when you think about it, because standard discs aren't really required. Um, if you're putting in a two or four bay, you're not gonna need that tremendous overhead of power underneath the bonnet, and therefore they don't see it useful to put it in there. But it's still great to see that this standard 14 TB drive is giving us this kind of performance. Now we're going to let this test run all the way through to the 64 meg mark. And then I'll make my way on to um, possibly an IOPS test. Uh, although the IOPS testing on hard drives is always a, you know quite depressing in an age of SSD. So I'll see what I'll go through as the test runs. But I'm going to stop talking now and just leave the test to run in the background so you guys can really savour those results. Feel free to skip forward, but I'm going to leave this test running live. And now we're arriving at the final test there at 64 megabytes. But overall, I'll be honest, I'm quite pleased with the results that Atto Disk Benchmark has given us for this. And of course, we can convert those into IOPS if we so choose. Um, from there, we will make our way into our next test. And for now, we'll save those, I think. We'll put those next to my test from earlier on, where I utilized the WD SSD. So, red 14 TB. And we'll save those tests as well. What we should also do while we're here is take a quick look at those WD um, SSD tests. If we were to open them up, open with, we want to use the Atto benchmark tool. Hopefully Atto is going to be on here. Would you Adam and Eve it? My recommendation is to check out that other video rather than waste your time on this any further. Let's get rid of that while I'm rapidly tapping things unnecessarily. So next, let's look at HD Tune. It's a very old fashioned application this, but it's still one of my favorites. Ignore the fact that it says 2,199, one of the issues you'll always find with that HD tune is it has difficulty recognizing bigger drives. Don't worry too much about that there. It's still quite an old tool, but it's still pretty reliable. But for now, let's start running that SATA test of HD tune. Tune, maybe. But straight away, we're seeing those read and writes in excess of 200 megabytes, which is exactly what we wanted. But let's see what the sustained read and write activity on this disk is. Um, while this test is running, we can look at different stuff in the background, and there's all the other error threshold, and if there are any issues there in the background with these disks, it would show up there. Obviously, those issues, if there were any, would reply to this individual disk, not the whole of WD14TB as a whole. That would be madness. Um, I'm gonna leave that running there in the background before we get ready for our next test, utilizing black magic. And there is the result of our HD tune test of the 14 TB WD Red. It's worth highlighting that one thing I will say about this drive that doesn't really come up enough <coughs> is the fact that this drive didn't make that much room. Sorry, I have a sore throat. But for a 14 TB drive, 
it was actually surprisingly quiet throughout that entire test. And I know I said I'd reserve judgment on this drive and save all of my real judgments for when I did the NAS-based testing. But, there's, you know, I do think that's something worth highlighting, that that was probably one of the quietest 14TB drives during live read-write access I've ever heard. And I'm looking forward to maybe after this test just seeing if that was a fluke or not. But let's come out of this and now we'll make our way into Black Magic and see what we can do with the Black Magic Speed Test. So with the Black Magic Speed Test, we'll make our way onto that W drive once again, and we'll be running a one gigabyte test file there. So let's see what the drive can give us. Straight away, we've hit that 200 mark, which is fantastic. And um, with it's worth mentioning that if you do put NAS drives in a NAS RAID environment, as soon as you start adding more drives together, depending on the RAID configuration you choose, the performance can only get better. For example, if you use a RAID 0 or RAID 1, then that means that you will have at least two disks that are being read and written to simultaneously at all times. Mind you, if you do a span RAID, perhaps not. So the result is that the read and write are increased because of that. Now, if you look at RAID 5 configurations, you can then look at setups where you can have four, five, six, seven, eight, and above drives, um, all of which are being read and written to simultaneously, which create incremental increases in read and write as you add more drives. There's still no denying that the likes of RAID 1 and RAID 0 will still give you much, much better performance overall, um, thanks to them being quite um, uh, lower CPU intensive RAID operations with RAID 5 being far busier because of the parity building. But with drives like this providing read and write speeds in excess of 150 to 180 megs, you are going to look at some great performance. And once again, what I'm going to do, this may be a little bit particular, but I'm going to move the mic a little lower uh, to the test bench area to see if you guys can hear the drive during this read write operation. Wait there. Now, you may well have heard a humming noise there in the background. That's because this test rig has got two PSUs. But what you didn't hear, well, at least what I'm not hearing, is lots of clicks and whirs. And that's exactly what I would expect from a 14TB drive undergoing this kind of intensive read-write operation. So, again, I am trying to reserve my judgment, but there's no denying that for a 14TB drive, this thing is surprisingly quiet, and I do intend to look into the disk cache and platter distribution of this disk to find out a little bit more about why this drive can be so quiet. And trust me, that is a damn good thing when you're looking at NAS devices that have multiple drives running to net together. Generally, drives that go above 10 TB are built very, very industriously. So it's therefore very surprising that this drive can be so pleasantly quiet. But I think I'm going to stop the testing here because I think the real tests are going to have to be when we insert these inside the Synology and QNAP NAS devices I have here, as well as in the comparisons with major NAS brand competitors. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do find it useful, do click like and subscribe below if you enjoyed it and found it useful. Um, but of course, do stay tuned for more videos featuring the WD Red 14 TB hard drive in a NAS array as well as that SSD too. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.